Arashi, Prince of the Sky, Chapter 20, Inside the Outside. Together, their spirits sailed amongst the stars and swam the deepest oceans, traveled to the greenest rainforests and to the tips of the tallest mountains. They shared their experiences as beasts of nature. They felt the oneness of the universe and the flow of time. Their connection grew as their lights began to shine in harmony. Cody learned so much about himself in these moments, about his strength, his courage, and his connection to Arashi, the prince of the sky. Arashi's fierce nature matched his own, along with his courage and his will to be free. The connection he felt was one that felt so familiar and his heart longed to know more. The dragon and the phoenix displayed how they created the storms. Their combined power was incredible. They danced in the clouds and amassed the energy to create wind and lightning as their storm swept the earth with rain and replenishment. Cody saw with his own two eyes the necessity for rain in this world and that without them, the world would be a wasteland. Nanabe taught him lessons on the history of the world and the folklore of spirits walking amongst the earth before the veil of the moon separated the worlds. Shimari would add his spin on the stories to help them make sense, which he found to be actually helpful. Everyone was working in harmony to help him grow and learn. His spirit was full, and he felt ready for whatever life was going to throw at him. Their last trip was to the palace of the moon. They beamed down in orbs of light and transformed back into their human forms. The hall was nothing of what it was just a couple nights ago. The light that illuminated the great Colosseum was dimmed. The pillars that had reached into the sky were now collapsed and in ruin. The energy was dark and full of fear. Oh, Mother Moon, what happened here? Fear was here, Arashi said, remembering the moon spirit flying into the storm. They looked around for a minute until Shimari caught something out of the corner of his eye. Hey, y'all. Is it possible for something else to be in here with us? I, I mean, I ain't scared of nothing, you know? I'm just, I wanna make sure y'all ain't scared uh, of nothing. His head was whipping left to right, trying to catch some movement. Cody looked around, but he couldn't see anything. But with his new senses, he definitely felt something present. Arashi clenched his fist and was prepared for whatever was about to show its face. Okay guys, time to go. Ishara held out her hands for them to grab a hold, but the ground underneath them began to shake, and her voice boomed, and it felt like it came from all around them. <laughs> oh no! Leaving so soon, dear sister! But you've only just arrived! The voice of fear echoed through the empty hall. The small light darkened even more, and the little fires started burning all around them. With their defenses up, everyone rallied together. With their backs to each other, they prepared for whatever fear was about to unleash. Okay, uh, we're out of here. Nanabe was raising her arms, but nothing happened. She struggled, but couldn't bring her arms down. Dang, I'm stuck! She was doing her best to escape fear's invisible hold. Hold on, I got you! Shimari said, beginning his transformation into the sea dragon. But it was foiled when a black disc appeared around his neck and everyone's neck. It trapped him halfway into his transformation with a sea dragon head and a human body. He fell over from the weight. Ah, oh, come on, this ain't right. Cody was getting nervous, but he wasn't afraid. He was more aware now of the great strength that lived within him. He knew it would protect him, but fear was already in his head. <laughs> Foolish child, you don't have the power you think you have. That boy doesn't see you. He never will. You're a murderer and a liar. No home, no parents, no goals! What do you have, huh? Nothing! Nothing! No, I'm not gonna let you win. Cody was fighting back fear. He kept his thoughts and his glow and his affirmation strong. I am here. No. I am light no. and I am love. No. Yes, no. yes, yes! No. I need to kill. That is within you. It's all you and nothing can control that insatiable appetite of the tiger. You kill because that is who you are. And that's worth love. Because everything you love will die. Because of you. No. Just like no. your mother. No. No. Stop.
Stop it! Cody pleaded. Images of his sick mother faded into his thoughts, and his last memory of her deathbed knocked him off his feet. Arashi was helpless to help his friend, as he was bound in place by the power of fear that was building in all of them. He tried to reach out to Cody with his mind, but was unable to get through. You're a killer! You killed your mother! You killed your father! You killed Spinoza! And you want to kill the dragon! Embrace your instinct, you beast! Kill him! Kill him! No! Kill him. No! Stop it! I am good! I am! I am light! I am all! The fire around them grew in size, rising higher and higher like a wall. Fear's eyes came emerging from the flames, red smoky eyes filled with hate. The sight of those eyes again sent shivers to Nanabe's core. She closed her eyes and tried her powers again, but with no luck. However, Arashi was furious. I've had enough! Arashi dug deep into the wells of his power. He pushed the energy outward as hard as he could until a blue sphere of light surrounded the five heroes. The black discs disappeared and they regained their movement. Ishara, grab my hand! Arashi reached out to Ishara. When their hands met, the sphere grew larger and stronger in size. Everyone, hold hands! It's the only way we're getting out of here. Shimari and Anabe complied. The force field grew as droves of demons and shadows came hurtling towards them, but the energy field held strong, repelling their advances. Cody was inconsolable, still reeling from the mental attack from fear. Am I here? Why am I here? I don't know. I don't. Cody, Cody, grab I, my hand. I don't want to hurt you, Ari. I don't. I can't do it. Just, just go without me. Just, just go. No, Cody. No one can ever tell you who you are. You tell them. Fear was banging a giant fist on their force field. Thankfully, it blocked out his penetrating thoughts. Cody rose to his feet slowly. You're not a killer. You're my friend. We're here with you. Now get your ass over here and remember who you are. Arashi was smiling at Cody, who smiled back. He ran over and joined hands with the rest of the group. The force field exploded with energy, pushing fear completely back, and replaced it with the feeling of overwhelming love and peace that washed over him like sun rays. He was turning into pure light. Don't break the connection. He can't harm us in here. We have to get back to our bodies. Everyone on three, we will descend back down. Okay, one, two. Shut up, you idiot. I was counting. One. Two. No fear. Right, Cody? No fear. Three. 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 They collectively turned to light and sent their energy rocketing back down to Earth. They were moving at the speed of light. Nothing but shapes and colors rushed by them, but fear was on their tails. I won't let you get away! The shadow creatures were surrounding them again. It moved in front of them and created a vortex of dark energy. Everyone moved out the way just in time, but it was too late for Cody. His light was swallowed up by the darkness. <laughs> You're mine, Cody. He opened his eyes to the darkness. He was alone again. He was completely alone. He couldn't move his arms or legs, paralyzed in place. He could hear more and more whispers echoing in the darkness. It was like a growing crescendo of monsters, snarls, and laughter. All he can do to keep from panicking was to listen to the sound of his own heartbeat. The memory of his mother holding his hand entered his mind's eye. In the darkness, he saw a faint light growing brighter and brighter. No, I'm not giving up. Never! Never. Cody reached for his light. Fear appeared in front of him with his flame burning bright and hot. But Cody couldn't feel its flames. His eyes began to glow a bright yellow. What? What is this? I said it before, and I'll say it again. You got the wrong one! Cody exploded into light, transforming into his tiger form, fierce and unbound by fierce control. Cody let out a ferocious roar and shattered the darkness surrounding him like glass. The light seeped in, and fear fizzled away like a bad dream. The light surrounded him until he felt a snap. Cody opened his eyes and everyone was standing over him. His body felt so heavy 
He could barely lift his head. Arashi held out his hand to help him up. He looked at him and smiled with tears in his eyes. I won. I, I beat him. Cody was overwhelmed with accomplishment. Arashi immediately hugged him and squeezed him tightly on the verge of tears himself. We're so proud of you, Cody. Nanabe was wiping tears from her own eyes. Ishara was a blue jay again, chirping and clucking on the desk. They all made it back by the skin of their teeth to live and continue fighting another day. Hey, yo, Nana, when you said we were going on a fun trip, you ain't mentioned none of that. Damn. Hey, glad you're okay, though, little man. Not many people can hold their own against fear. Thanks, Shy. I almost didn't make it. I almost let him control me and make me forget, but the light got me out. Yeah. Well, thank Jeebus. Yo, Ari would have shat his shit if you ain't come back, bro. <laughs> Arashi punched Shamari in the arm and then gave him a hug. What an annoying big brother. Well, look, I'm hungrier than a fat chick on a diet. Where the food at? Shy, wait. I have to brief you guys on one last thing before we go. Nanabe said, returning back behind her desk. The boys sat down in their chairs and waited for her to collect her notes. Okay, here's what we know. Fear's real. It's out there and very powerful. Once we get Ari those crystals, he will have the power to shift the balance, at least for a while. With our combined efforts and with Root backing us up, I have no doubt that we will succeed. We have teams all over the planet ready to strike when we give the word. If Fear wants to destroy the world, he's got a major fight on his hands. She pushed a button on her desk and a virtual map appeared in front of them. Africa has the largest supply of natural untouched crystals in the world. Using some high-tech vibration readers, we will be able to detect easily where the reserves of these crystals are. Based on some of our intel, our first stop will be Morocco, Northern Africa. Cody looked at Arashi to make sure he was hearing her correctly. Was he actually gonna go to Africa with them? Arashi looked back at Cody, not sure what he was thinking, so he just winked at him and turned back to Nanabe. Our first stop will be Fez, one of the oldest cities in the world. And believe it or not, they have managed to stay the same over all these centuries. Therefore, there's an untapped well of resources that we will exploit for the good of humanity. Get some sleep, we leave first thing in the morning. Nanabe concluded by clicking the button again. Arashi raised his hand. Yes, sweetheart? What about mom and dad? He signed to her. She took a moment to answer. I, um, we can't risk their involvement right now. I know Bishop and Burmy. If I told them, they would be on the first flight to Africa after us. I promise you, Ari, the safest place for them to be is right here. She was trying her best to sound sympathetic, but he missed his parents, and he worried that they would be worried about him. Look, I promise we will give them a call in the morning, okay? She's hiding something. I agree, but now is not the time to dig. We'll find out soon enough. Okay, guys. Great job, Cody and Ari. Thanks for saving our lives yet again. I'm excited for the next leg of our journey. It's going to be tough, but I am confident that we will push through. Good night. Shamari, you mind showing them to their rooms? All right, come on, guys. Let's go. Walk quickly, guys. Come on. I don't want to miss the cafe before they close. Let's go. Let's go. They followed behind Shamari through the double doors. Ari turned around to see Nanabe, but she had disappeared. He was going to get to the bottom of this mystery, family or not. After having a late, late dinner, Arashi, Ishara, and Cody were in their room, laid out on their separate beds. Arashi was talking with Ishara as she sat upon his pillow. Hmm. Seems like there's more to her plan than she's willing to share. They were discussing the possibilities of what Nanabe was secretly up to. At dinner, they tried to interrogate Shimari, but he seemed clueless to anything but the pizza he was devouring. Why wouldn't she let me talk to mom and dad? That's the part that has me really stumped. She knows how they are. Hey. What are you guys talking about? Oh, we're talking about my sister and what secrets the root is hiding. We think it's pretty big. He signed to him. Cody looked around and nodded his head in agreement and gave him the thumbs up. Cody held his gaze on Arashi, which made his heart skip a beat again. He hated that he could have this effect on him, but also welcomed the feeling each time and hoped it would never go away. Yo, Ari, why can I hear you in the spirit world, but not here? Well, you weren't really hearing me, not with your ears anyways. In the spirit world, our senses are all in our minds. So it was more like you felt the vibration from my thoughts and understood them like you would if you had ears. Sound is a vibration. 
We just interpret it differently. Hmm. Sophia, it's still your voice. But, but why? I don't know. But I'm getting it back. He was just trying to kill me, but he didn't. And he couldn't and still can't and won't. He took something from me, but I gained something more. I didn't know it before all this started, but I've been blocked my whole life. I may not have the ability to speak, but I gained the power to listen. And I'm listening even more now. And as she felt a humble acceptance of himself. And then he thought, whoa, when did I start speaking like this? Hmm, maybe it's the power of love. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it feels good. Well, personally, I can't wait for you to beat the crap out of that lunatic and get your voice back. Because I can't wait to hear your voice with my own two ears. That warmed his heart. He was so happy to have met Cody. And to think, if fear hadn't targeted him, they wouldn't have met. Hey, I never properly thanked you for warning me in the alley before. You risked your life for me. <laughs> You're incredibly courageous. Oh man, you have no idea how hard it was. He wanted me to kill you. He tried to control me with fear, but I wasn't having it. <laughs> Did I tell you I told him to fuck off? Arashi shook his head and smiled. <laughs> this guy. I know I wouldn't have been able to beat him without you guys showing me how to access my powers. And without your words. It's been there this whole time, just waiting for me to tap into it. So, thank you. Cody was reaching out his hand. Ari caught his beckoning for him. He got up from his bed to stand over him. He grabbed his hand and squeezed it tightly with both hands. The electricity surging through his body sent butterflies to his stomach and heat to his eyes. Lights out, fellas. They heard Shamari's voice over the intercom. They both raised their middle fingers to the camera as the lights went out automatically. But before he released his hand, Cody pulled Arashi in on top of him and wrapped his other hand around the back of his neck. The next thing he knew, his lips were pressed against Cody's. His entire body went warm with blood rushing to his head, making it hard to breathe. His lips were soft yet firm. He had been waiting to do that for a while. He kissed him back with urgency until suddenly the light bulbs in the room popped and the camera also short-circuited, causing it to smoke. They pulled away and Ari hopped back in his bed quickly, laughing at the electrical pulse. Good night. He fell asleep with a smile on his face for the first time in his human experience. End of chapter 20.